Greetings, fellow detectives. Wizard Kitten here, bringing you a new Nancy Drew analysis video. Today's video is brought to you by the patrons over at Mystique Manor and by all the official fellow detective channel members. If you too would like to support the channel and gain access to exclusive features, check out patreon.com slash wizardkitten to become a patron or click join next to the subscribe button to become an official fellow detective. One of my absolute favorite things about the Nancy Drew series are the impeccably designed game environments. While open world, fully explorable environments are cool and all, I have so much respect for the intimate, charming, and artistically rendered two-dimensional spaces that are home to Nancy's mysteries. Whenever I stop to really appreciate them, I am amazed by the sheer attention to detail that was paid to these beautiful spaces. Of these spaces, one of the most common varieties is a bedroom for our heroine to stay in while she solves the mystery of each game. Nancy is constantly traveling to exciting locations and, therefore, needs a place to rest her head at night. So for today's video, let's appreciate the Nancy Drew bedrooms on a deeper level by ranking them from worst to best. To start, we need to narrow the scope of this ranking somewhat. I am only including bedrooms that are assigned to Nancy herself, eliminating bedrooms that belong to other characters, like Jane's bedroom in Curse of Blackmore Manor, or Emily Crandall's bedroom in Secret of the Old Clock. I am also only including rooms with a bed and not makeshift bedrooms, meaning no cots, tents, or sleeping bags, eliminating games like Haunting of Castle Malloy or The Shattered Medallion. With these restrictions, we have 15 bedrooms to rank, but how to do it? I've chosen three parameters by which to judge the bedrooms. First, character. Does the bedroom have a clear design style that is cohesive, stunning, and unique? Does it have a certain amount of X factor, where you walk in and are instantly impressed? Two, culture. Does the bedroom not only fit the character and atmosphere of the game, but does it add to it? Does it help express the unique location that Nancy is visiting and make us feel like we are visiting as well? And finally, functionality. Is the bedroom useful? Does it include puzzles or valuable clues or cutscenes? Is it interactive in some way or is it literally just a place to sleep? With these restrictions and parameters in mind, we're ready to get ranking. This video should be relatively spoiler-free, but please note that I will be discussing important clues that can be discovered in some of these bedrooms. You have been warned. Without further ado, let's get ranking. Number 15, Midnight in Salem, the Perry House Guest Room. For regular viewers of the channel, this will not be a surprise. I hate this bedroom. Not only is it flat, boring, and completely devoid of culture, character, or functionality, but it isn't even a finished space. The bed is something straight out of House Flipper. The wall hangings are bland, copyright-free printouts, and sometimes it will be raining out of one window and not raining out of the other. It's truly atrocious and doesn't deserve any more time in this video. Number 14, Secret of the Scarlet Hand, the Colonial Hotel Room. This hotel room is located in Washington, D.C., and is Nancy's stopping off point when she isn't exploring the Beach Hill Museum or visiting Alejandro del Rio or Taylor Sinclair. Unfortunately, the Colonial is really just your standard hotel room. Honestly, this is probably pretty realistic for the game, and I don't have any qualms with the room per se. It just doesn't stand out as interesting. This game is unique because the focus is on the culture and history of Mexico and the Maya, but it takes place in Washington, D.C., so there's almost a cultural dissonance between the detail of Beach Hill and the modernity of the colonial. It gets the job done, but really, it's nothing special and only functional because of Nancy's computer and alarm clock. Number 13, Danger on Deception Island, Katie's Boathouse. This is the least bedroom-like space on the list, but I still included it because the boathouse does have a specified location for sleeping and it isn't makeshift. The little boathouse bunks are cute and charming and make sense for a game that takes place in a harbor with a significant nautical influence. However, there's not much else going on with the boathouse bunks. They're barely functional, especially since Nancy never actually sleeps there. 
Really, they end up being more for show. Cute, but not impressive. Number 12, the deadly device, Technology of Tomorrow Today Lab Bunk Room. This teeny tiny little room is reserved for visiting scientists and also Nancy. The bunk beds are cute, the Coco Kringle sheets are a fun touch, and there are actually a couple of clues here. There is also a little scare factor moment dedicated to this space, so it ends up being slightly more functional than Katie's boathouse, but the same amount of cute and charming. It fits the location, it makes sense as a space, it adds a little bit of charm, but that's about it. Number 11, The Haunted Carousel, Captain's Cove Hotel Room. The Captain's Cove is a historical hotel room on the edge of the Associated Amusement Park in New Jersey. It's mostly just your standard hotel room, but it does at least have some nautical-themed decorations to match the amusement park, making it more unique than the colonial in Secret of the Scarlet Hand. It's also got a reasonable amount of functionality, including Nancy's computer, a room service menu that holds a useful clue, and the infamous ironing board. It's mostly standard, but does have some nice additional features. Number 10, Warnings at Waverly Academy, Ramsey Hall Dorm Room. The dorm room that Nancy shares with Corrine is pretty typical for a dorm. Plain furniture, bland walls, and simple floors. Corrine's side is charmingly decorated and includes a personal touch, while Nancy's side, understandably, remains pretty boring. The room does, however, have a beautiful view of Waverly's famous oak tree and some lovely lighting that makes it feel cozy and nostalgic. It's also very appropriate for the game and functional because multiple clues can be found and multiple cutscenes can be initiated there. It accomplishes what it needs to, and while it's not as exciting as Rachel or Mel's dorm rooms, it's still quite nice. Number 9, Treasure in the Royal Tower, Wickford Castle Hotel Room. This may seem low for such a grand game, but the hotel rooms of Wickford Castle are pretty dull compared to the rest of the castle. Nancy's room in particular is decorated almost entirely in the same bland color, so the room doesn't feel as inviting or grand as perhaps it should. The decorations also are not that interesting. It's still a nice room, spacious and elegant, but given the rest of Wickford Castle, it should definitely be fancier. It does have some functionality as some important objects can be found there, and it is still prettier than some of the other spaces on this list, but it just left a little bit to be desired. Number 8, The Silent Spy, Glaucus Lodge Hotel Room. We are now starting to get to the rooms with a little more oomph to them. The Glaucus Lodge hotel room that Nancy stays in is beautiful, with rich colors and textures, like mustard and burgundy, mahogany and velvet. It feels luxurious and has a beautiful view of the lower courtyard. It's also functional, including multiple clues, a zipline opportunity, and a fun cutscene. It doesn't necessarily scream Scotland at me, but it is a stunning rich room with lots of great features. There could be more exploration and even more character, but we're starting to get to the rooms that I really like. Number 7, The Captive Curse, Castle Finster Hotel Room. This room is interesting because Nancy is technically based out of it even though it feels like a museum bedroom for eyes only and not for actual guests. Regardless, she keeps her things in the room and makes calls from it, so I'm going to call it hers. This room is absolutely beautiful. The colors are dark and deep and the wood tones feel majestic. The canopy bed feels like the peak of luxury, and all of the furnishings are clearly part of a royal set. The room is also incredibly functional, home to a secret passageway and some really important cutscenes. It's also a great location to make calls from, as Nancy can gaze out the window at the shooting stars while she tries to salvage her crumbling relationship. It's really a lovely space, and hits enough Bavarian notes that it fits in with the culture. Number 6, Alibi and Ashes, Nancy's personal River Heights home. Having the 25th game take place in Nancy's hometown of River Heights was such a brilliant idea. It's difficult to really describe the thrill of seeing Nancy's bedroom fully take shape for the first time after being stuck at only her desk for so long. Turns out the rest of her room is darling. The pastel walls, the feminine artwork, the cozy chair reading nook with incredible natural light, and all the little cabinets full of treasures from her past cases all make this room such a fun place to explore. There's also plenty of clues and helpful items in the room, plus the fact that it's Nancy's own bedroom adds a layer to her character that is truly exciting. 
Being able to see her design taste makes her feel even more like a real person, and I treasure that. Ultimately, this is just kind of a standard suburban house bedroom, but it's full of charm and character, and I love it. Number 5, Phantom of Venice, Con Escosta Guest Room. The top five rooms on this list, starting with this one, all receive top marks for culture. The guest room of the Con Escosta is absolutely lovely, with rich red colors, deep woods, and an absolutely beautiful attached balcony that Nancy can step out on to view the shimmering waters of the Venetian canals. The room also feels personable, since Nancy shares it with Helena and can see some of her belongings. Plus, it's home to the only wardrobe option that we've gotten in the series. There's a couple of highly important cutscenes that take place in the room, and it does have some important objects as well. It misses out on the very top of the list because it's not quite as functional as some of its contenders, but the Con Escosta room is still simply wonderful. Number 4, Shadow at the Water's Edge, Ryokan Hiei. The Ryokan Hiei in Kyoto, Japan is absolutely stunning in all aspects, and the rooms are no exception. They are simply designed with minimal decoration, traditional woven textures, and natural colors. It immediately feels like a very relaxing location, and I love how it changes depending on the time of day. This room gets a perfect score for culture, because I immediately feel like I'm in Japan. The attached balcony overlooking the garden is also absolutely beautiful and adds to the character of the room. It ultimately doesn't have as much going on as some other spaces, but that is precisely the point. It would feel entirely inappropriate for the Ryokan rooms to be as packed with items as some of the other rooms, so it ranks higher for its authenticity. Plus, some of the scare factor moments that happen in this room are absolutely chilling, making it quite memorable. Number 3, White Wolf of Icicle Creek, Icicle Creek Lodge Hotel Room. I would stay in this hotel room in a heartbeat. It perfectly captures the feeling of staying in a cozy log cabin or lodge in the midst of winter, the chilled winds outside blustering against the window pane while you cuddle up warm and comfortable under a handmade quilt. The natural log wood, the rustic bed frame, and the amenities all make this room absolutely delightful. A perfect Canadian ski retreat. The quilt truly is the hero piece of the room too. A dream quilt, necessary for any wintry room. This room receives perfect scores for culture and character. It's functional in how often Nancy needs to use the space and feels like a perfect home base for what she needs to accomplish. Perhaps I'm biased because this particular design style speaks to me on a soul level, but I absolutely adore this room. The warm light and cozy vibes never fail to make me feel at peace. Number 2, Curse of Blackmore Manor, Brigitte's Room. Full disclosure, I had such a hard time choosing between the top two rooms of this list. I ultimately chose this room for the number two spot because it could easily be considered a bit garish, and I have a soft spot for our number one room. But Brigitte's bedroom in Blackmore Manor is simply everything. Designed with medieval astronomy and glamour in mind, this bedroom has a full-color wall mural, a massive fireplace, a stunning and over-the-top bed, dozens of doodads to mess around with, a cozy little window seat, and lavish decorations out the wazoo. This room is packed with character and holds a truly impressive amount of puzzles and clues that are crucial for solving the mystery. Nancy sleeps here, eats here, dreams here, experiences terrifying nighttime hauntings here, and solves so many puzzles here. The astronomical influence in the space is also something that I personally love, so really there isn't anything I dislike about this space. I love how stuffed it is with charm, culture, and functionality, and would happily visit this room anytime. Sans ghosts and werewolves, if you please. But if possible, there is one bedroom that I love even more. Number one, message in a haunted mansion, the Golden Gardenia Chinese room. This room has all of the culture, charm, and functionality of the Blackmore Manor room, but shows a restraint in decoration and style that I think makes it feel more purposeful, tasteful, and complete. As the game mentions, themed rooms in B&Bs are quite common, and Abby and Rose decided to keep much of the original furnishing in the Chinese room to honor the original theme. 
The room is dripping with rich reds and bright golds, and every design element feels elegant. From the curtains, to the ornately designed bed frame, to the large fireplace, to the delicately textured fabrics of the settees. But what really sets this room apart is the character and functionality. Not only does it have dozens of gorgeous and important decorations and items, like the jade dragon figurine or the key in the bed frame, but it has the woven tapestry with a poem that solves the wooden puzzle inlaid in the wall. This room is literally the key to solving the mystery. Plus, there's hauntings, there's cutscenes, there's everything. This room is literally perfection. I love everything about it. So there you have it, fellow detectives. My ranking of every room that Nancy Drew has stayed in as part of her adventures around the world. As I mentioned before, I am so impressed by the design teams at Her Interactive and their ability to create such beautiful, meaningful spaces that live in my mind rent-free every single day. I can't tell you the number of times that I've stayed somewhere in real life or visited somewhere in real life just because it reminded me of the beautiful environments of the Nancy Drew games. They really are something special. But what do you think, fellow detectives? Which Nancy Drew bedroom is your favorite? Do you agree with my ranking? What Nancy Drew game didn't have a visible bedroom for Nancy that you wish we could have seen? Cough Cough Coast Dogs of Moon Lake. Let a wizard kitten know in the comments section down below. If you really enjoyed this video, please consider hitting that like button or tipping me for the video with a super thanks next to the download button right beneath the video. If you would like to come join a fantastic group of fellow detectives at Mystique Manor as a patron for the channel, gain access to exclusive content, and support the making of more content like this, please check out patreon.com slash wizardkitten. I also have channel memberships with exclusive badges and emojis to use during streams and in the comment section. If you'd like to support the channel by becoming an official fellow detective, click join next to the subscribe button. Please feel free to follow the channel on Instagram or Discord, linked in the description box down below. And as always, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for more Nancy Drew and Cozy Game content. Thank you so much for watching, fellow detectives. I will see you soon.